Okay, in this video, we're going to be looking at similar triangles and other similar figures. So we'll talk about the properties of proportion. Also, we'll talk about the mid-segments of triangles and quadrilaterals and also indirect measurements. Let's talk about what similar triangles are. Triangle ABC is similar to triangle DEF, and we write that as triangle ABC, and then this is the symbolic notation for it, is similar to that's the squiggly mark, then triangle DEF. So triangle ABC is similar to triangle DEF if and only if angle A is congruent to angle D, angle B is congruent to angle E, angle C is congruent to angle F, and AB over DE is equal to AC over DF and equal to BC over EF. In other words, the ratios of the corresponding sides must be equal to each other. And also the corresponding angles had to be congruent as well. With similar polygons, two polygons are with the, with the same number of vertices are similar if there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between the vertices of one of the vertices of the other such that the corresponding interior angles are congruent and corresponding sides are proportional. In other words, they must have the same, the sides, the corresponding sides must have the same ratio. Okay, now it's a couple of similar triangle theorems. One is the SSS similarity, and the other one is the SAS similarity. The third one, of course, is the AA similarity. We'll talk about those. The SSS similarity for triangles is this. If corresponding sides of two triangles are proportional, then the triangles are similar. Okay, now we talked about uh, similar triangles in one of the videos. Of course, you know, similar triangles have pretty much the same shape, but not the same size. They have the same shape, but not the same size. Okay. And then you have your SAS similarity for triangles. If you're given two triangles and two sides are proportional and the included angles are congruent, then the triangles are similar. Okay. And then the third one is your angle-angle similarity, or AA, meaning if two angles of one triangle are congruent respectively to the two angles of a second triangle, then we can say that the triangles are similar. So let's see how those particular similarity properties can be used in this example. Let's say we want to find a pair of similar triangles in this figure. And we're told from this that AE, line segment AE is parallel to line segment BD. Well, because of that, we can say that the corresponding angles that are formed by a transversal cutting those parallel segments are congruent, which means this. If we look at angle CBD and angle CAE, that's this angle down here, those two angles are congruent to each other because of the fact you have two parallel lines Cut by transversal, that means you got corresponding angles being congruent, congruent to each other. So angle CBD is congruent to single ang, triangle. Angle CBD is congruent to, to angle CBE, CAE. And also on a similar note, uh, angle CDB is congruent to angle CEA for the same reason that corresponding angles are congruent. And notice that angle C is the common angle for triangle CBD and triangle CAE. So I can say that angle is equal to itself. So we can say that triangle CBD is congruent to triangle CAE by the AA similarity property, because you got 
a pair of angles can go into a corresponding pair of angles of a second triangle. So by the AA uh, similarity property, I can say that those two triangles are similar. So triangle CBD is congruent to, is similar to triangle CAE. That's what I want to say is similar to. Okay, now we got another illustration here we want to show or find a pair of similar uh, triangles here. And we're told that line segment BD intersects AE in C. And we also know this. Angle B is congruent to angle D. They both are 90 degree angles, so we can say that angle B is congruent to angle D, as they're both right triangles. Also, we can say, because they're vertical angles, angle ACB, that's this angle right here, is congruent to angle ECD. Those are the two angles that are marked off because they're vertical angles and there is a property that does mention that vertical angles are congruent. So angle ACB is congruent to angle ECD. And that's all you need right there because you have a pair of angles of one triangle that is congruent respectively to two angles of a second triangle. So we can say that triangle ACB is similar to triangle ECD using the AA similarity uh, property or angle angle similarity property. Okay, let's say we want to solve for X. And we're told that triangle AC, ABC is similar to triangle ECD. Okay, well, since those triangles are similar, then that means that their corresponding sides have to be proportional. So here, side AB must be proportional to ED, AC must be proportional to EC, and BC must be proportional to DC. Now, given that AB is 5 and ED, that's this side right here, that's 8. Since AB is proportional to ED, we can write that as 5 over 8 as a proportion. And also, look at ED. I mean CD. Here's CD right here. CD, that's X. Which means, if all of BD is 12 and just CD is just X, then BC must make up the remaining uh, total of 12, which is going to be 12 minus X. And of course, BD is proportional to DC, so BD, I mean BC, is 12 minus X over DC, which is just simply X. So here we have a proportion that we can easily solve. Now here we're going to do some cross multiplication here. 5 times X, that's your 5X, equals 8 times the quantity 12 minus X. Now if we simplify this, you're going to have 5X is equal to 8 times 12, that's 96, minus 8 times X, that's 8X. So you have the equation 5X is equal to 96 minus 8X. Now you want to add 8X to both sides to get all your X's on one side, so you're going to get the 13X is equal to 96. Then you'll divide both sides of that equation by 13 to get X is equal to 96 over 13. So X, which is the length of CD, or DC if you want to call it, is 96 over 13. Okay, here's some properties of proportion. If a line parallel to one side of a triangle intersects the other sides, then it divides those sides into proportional segments. So if you have this blue line intersecting one side of a triangle, and it's parallel to one side of that triangle, well, if it intersects the other two sides and it's parallel to this side here, DE, then that means we have proportional se segments. In other words, X is proportional to Y and Z is proportional to W, which is this statement down here. 
take the reciprocal on both sides and still you'll have y is proportional to w and w is proportional to z. So if a line divides two sides of a triangle into proportional segments, then that means that the line is going to be parallel to the third side. As you can see here, if this line divides it into two proportional segments, then that means that this blue line is going to be parallel to line DE, which is the third side. If parallel lines cut off congruent segments on one transversal, then they cut off congruent segments on any transversal. Okay, so here you got parallel lines cutting off congruent segments on one transversal. Let's say this transversal is AD. And that means on any transversal, like AE, it's going to cut off congruent segments. So, these are cutting off congruent segments A, B, C, D, and D. And that means it's going to cut off congruent segments E, F, G, and H on another transversal. Also, if parallel lines cut off congruent segments on one transversal, then they cut off congruent segments on any transversal. Okay, that's pretty much the same, same thing. Okay, this deals with uh, using a compass and a straight edge, which we will not uh, basically discuss in this particular video. Well, let's look at the mid-segment. The term mid-segment is just going to be the segment connecting the midpoints of two sides of a triangle. So in this case here, you have side triangle ABC. Side AB has a midpoint M. Side BC has a midpoint of N. Connect those two midpoints, you're going to have the mid-segment, which is MN. That's your mid-segment of this triangle ABC. And that mid-segment is parallel to the third side of the triangle and half as long. So in other words, this mid-segment MN is going to be parallel to this side AC. The length of this mid-segment is always half the length of the third side AC. So in other words, let's say this length of this particular line segment AC, which is the side of that triangle. Let's say that's 18. Then that means MN is going to be half that, which is 9. Okay. So the mid segment is always going to be one half the length of the third side of that triangle. And it's always going to be parallel to the third side of that triangle. Yeah. And also they say if a line bisects one side of a triangle and is parallel to the second side, then it bisects the third side and is therefore a mid-segment. Okay. So let's say this line if we were to extend this, if it bisects one side of a triangle, it's going to be parallel to this side of the triangle. That means it must bisect the third side of the triangle, this side right here. And then that will make it the mid-segment. Okay, here's an example. In quadrilateral A, B, C, D, M, and N, M, N, P, and Q are midpoints of the sides. What kind of quadrilateral is MNPQ. That's this right here. That's in blue. Well, if NP up here is the mid segment in triangle BCD, that means that NP is parallel to BD. So here they drew a diagonal here, BD. Here, NP, NP is the mid segment. Of triangle BCD up here. So that means that NP must be parallel to BD. 
and MQ is the mid-segment of triangle BAD. That's this triangle here, so MQ must be parallel to D BD. And if that's the case, then MQ must be parallel to NP. Because I'm thinking that MP, NP is parallel to BD, and then you can say BD is parallel to MQ, then that means that MQ and NP are parallel to each, up, each other. That's usually called the transitive property. And similarly, we can show that N, MN is parallel to QP. Okay, which they can go through the whole details about that one. So we can conclude that MN PQ is considered to be a parallelogram because you've already proven that you have two pairs of sides that are parallel. And by definition of a parallelogram, we can say MNPQ is a parallelogram because you have two pairs of opposite sides parallel to each other. Okay, next we'll talk about the centroid of a segment of a triangle. Now, the median of a triangle is always the segment connecting a vertex to the, of the triangle to the midpoint of the opposite side. And every triangle has three medians. So in this triangle, ABC, one median is BN. Starts from the vertex, which is B, ends up at the midpoint of the opposite side, which is N. The same for AM, that too is a median. Starts from the vertex, ends up at the midpoint of the opposite side of that triangle, which is M. And also P, well CP is a median, because it starts at the vertex, which is C, ends up perpendicular to the opposite side, AB, which is in this case P. So you have three medians. Now, when you intersect those three medians, you have what they call a centroid which is called the center of gravity. So here the centroid is that special name. That's the point of intersection of all three medians. And the centroid of a triangle always divides each median in a ratio of one to two. In other words, let's take this median right here, Vn. G is the centroid. The length of BG is always twice the length of GN. From the vertex of the center, that's the length that's twice as long as the length from the centroid to the midpoint of the opposite side of that uh, triangle. Okay? So it's a 1 to 2 ratio. Alright, indirect measurements. Similar triangles have long been used to make indirect measurements. So here we can determine the height of the pyramid using what they call similar triangles here. And basically, in some of the problems that you're going to be doing in your homework, you're going to see that you'll be using indirect measurements and using the concept of similar triangles to work out problems. Like in this particular situation here. On a sunny day, a tall tree cast a 40 meter shadow. At the same time, a meter stick held vertically cast a two and a half meter shadow. How tall is the tree? And as you can see how this illustration is, they drew a picture of a tree. We don't know how tall it is. That's what we're trying to find. So that's your X. It cast a 40 meter shadow. And they formed that into a triangle. So that length of that shadow is 40 meters. And then you have a one meter stick is casting a shadow of two, two and a half meters here. So here they're forming two similar triangles here which we can use to solve this particular problem. So in this case here there's similar triangles here. So if I take the ratio of the length of this tree to its shadow or the height of the tree to the shadow. That's x over 40. Now if I'm going to say x over 40 
for this ratio, then for the second one, I'm going to say the height of the meter stick to its shadow, 1 over, over 2.5. So now you have x over 40 equaling to 1 over 2.5. Now, we have a proportion. We can solve this for x, so we cross multiply. 2.5 times x is 2.5x equals to 40 times 1, which is 40. So 2.5x is equal to 40. Divide both sides by 2 and a half, you're going to get x equals 16. So the tree is 16 meters tall. Okay. Also, we can use similar triangles to determine the slope. Now, if you remember back in the days of algebra when you were finding the slope of a line passing through two points, now, slope in this case is the change in your y values divided by the corresponding change in your x values. And also, slope can, can be considered as rise divided by run. The rise is going to be going up and down. The run is going straight across left and right. And here is just an illustration of how you can determine the slope using similar triangles here. So let's just say if we had this line right here, y is equal to 3x. This similar triangle can represent the ratio of 3 to 1. This triangle right here is similar to this one because this, even though it has the rise of 6 and the run of 2, 6 over 2, that's the same as 3 over 1, which is this triangle down here, 3 over 1. Okay, And there is a formula for determining the slope of any line if you were given two points. So here, if you're given two points, let's say A is going to be x1, y1, and A, let's say B, not A. B is going to be x2, y2, with x1 not equaling to x2. That means your x coordinates can't be equal to each other. The slope, which is going to be lowercase m, of a line called line AB is going to be this. The difference is in your y coordinates, y sub 2 minus y sub 1, divided by the difference is in your x coordinates, x2 minus x1. And this is shown uh, graphically on a coordinate plane where the rise goes up and down. That's the change in y, y2 minus y1. The run goes straight across, x2 minus x1. So that's why it's rise over run. And I'll do an example here before we close out this particular video. Let's say you have this point, negative 4, 6, and let's say 7, 9. And I want to find the slope of this line passing through those two points. Okay, using a formula, you have m is equal to y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. Now, in this case here, negative 4, 6, I'm going to let x1 be negative 4. y1 will be 6. And then for the point 7, 9, x2 will be 7. y2 will be 9. So in this case here, y2 minus y1 will be 9 minus 6. Divided by x2 minus x1. 7 minus negative 4. And then we simplify the numerator and the denominator. 9 minus 6 will give you 3 over 7 minus a negative 4, which is the same as 7 plus 4, is 11. And that will be your slope in simplest form, 3 elevenths. So the slope of the line passing through those two points would be 3 elevenths. Okay? And that will conclude this particular video on similar triangles and other similar figures.